In the annals of scientific achievement, few names loom as large and as controversial as J. Robert Oppenheimer, a brilliant physicist ensconced in the secrecy of the New Mexico desert. He led the Herculean effort to unlock the destructive power hidden within the atom, all under the pressing weight of a world at war and the creeping shadow of the Holocaust. But in the aftermath of the atomic blasts that ended the Second World War, Oppenheimer faced a reckoning with his own conscience. Did the man dubbed the father of the atomic bomb regret the nuclear age his ingenuity helped create? In the upcoming film Oppenheimer, we delve deep into the labyrinth of innovation, morality, and the unparalleled impact of a discovery that changed the world forever. Julius Robert Oppenheimer, born in New York City in 1904, was a child prodigy who would grow up to play a pivotal role in one of the most significant scientific endeavors of the 20th century, the Manhattan Project. His parents were German-Jewish immigrants who had successfully established themselves in the textile importing business. Oppenheimer's intellectual prowess was evident from a young age. He graduated from Harvard University with the highest honors, summa cum laude, after completing his studies in just three years. He then pursued further studies in theoretical physics at Cambridge University in the United Kingdom and the University of Göttingen in Germany, where he earned his doctorate at the tender age of 23. Nicknamed Oppy, he quickly gained recognition in the scientific community, collaborating with some of the most renowned scientists of his time. His academic work contributed to the advancement of quantum theory, and he made predictions that would later be proven true, such as the existence of neutrons and black holes. Beyond his scientific pursuits, Oppenheimer was also a well-rounded individual with interests in various fields. He learned Sanskrit, studied religion, and was an advocate for several progressive causes. The outbreak of World War II brought a dramatic change to Oppenheimer's life. After the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941 in the United States, subsequent entry into the war as part of the Allies, Oppenheimer was recruited to be part of the highly secretive Manhattan Project. This project was a research and development undertaking during World War II that produced the first nuclear weapons. Oppenheimer's task was to figure out how to initiate and sustain the neutron chain reaction necessary for a nuclear explosion. His superiors were highly impressed by his broad knowledge, ambition, and ability to motivate and collaborate with other scientists. Recognizing his leadership qualities, the U.S. Army appointed Oppenheimer as the director of the secret laboratory, where the atomic bomb would be developed and tested in 1942. Under Oppenheimer's leadership, a laboratory, located in Los Alamos, New Mexico, became a hub of innovation and scientific progress. Despite facing numerous challenges, including logistical problems, security concerns, and the immense pressure to develop the bomb before the Axis powers, Oppenheimer successfully led a team of brilliant scientists and engineers to achieve their goal. The successful test of the first atomic bomb in July 1945 marked a turning point in the war and in human history. Oppenheimer's role in the development of nuclear weapons earned him the nickname Father of the Atomic Bomb, a title that he would carry with mixed feelings for the rest of his life. The selection of Los Alamos as the location for the laboratory was influenced by Oppenheimer's personal connection to the region. He loved the American Southwest and owned a ranch in New Mexico. When Army officials were scouting for suitable locations for the lab, Oppenheimer suggested the Los Alamos Ranch School, a private boys' school near Santa Fe. This suggestion was accepted, and Oppenheimer soon found himself overseeing a rapidly expanding workforce at the newly established Los Alamos Laboratory. Oppenheimer's role was not limited to just assembling a group of brilliant scientists. He also played a crucial role in motivating, organizing, and pushing them to perform at their best. Physicist Victor Weisskopf remembered Oppenheimer as being intellectually and even physically present at each decisive step, which created a unique atmosphere of enthusiasm and challenge. This environment fueled a series of scientific discoveries that culminated in the creation of the world's first nuclear weapon. The culmination of their efforts was the Trinity Test, conducted on July 16, 1945, at a site south of Los Alamos. Oppenheimer and his colleagues gathered to witness the world's first nuclear explosion. The atmosphere was incredibly tense. The scientists knew that the success or failure of the bomb, which they had nicknamed Gadget, would have far-reaching implications for the future of the world. The explosion was successful, marking a pivotal moment in human history. The bomb detonated with an energy equivalent to approximately 20 kilotons of TNT, creating a mushroom cloud that rose more than 38,000 feet into the air. 
The success of the Trinity test marked the end of the Manhattan Project's development phase and set the stage for the use of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, just a few weeks later, which ultimately led to the end of World War II. While the scientists and officials involved in the Manhattan Project were aware of the devastating power of the atomic bomb, they also believed it had the potential to bring an end to World War II. By May 1945, the war in Europe had concluded with the surrender of Nazi Germany, but the conflict in the Pacific raged on. U.S. officials were deeply concerned that the most brutal phase of the war was yet to come, as they prepared for a potential invasion of the Japanese mainland. The hope was that the demonstration of the new weapon's overwhelming power could force Japan to surrender without the need for a costly and bloody invasion. The success of the Trinity test bolstered these hopes, but it also raised profound ethical and philosophical questions for those involved. Oppenheimer himself was deeply moved by the test's success, and it prompted him to reflect on its implications for humanity. In a 1965 interview, he recalled that the explosion had brought to mind a passage from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, in which the god Vishnu, attempting to convince the prince Arjuna to fulfill his duty as a warrior, assumes a terrifying, multi-armed form and declares, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Oppenheimer's recollection of this passage suggests that he, and perhaps others involved in the project, grappled with the weighty responsibility of having created a weapon capable of unparalleled destruction. In the weeks following the Trinity test, the United States dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, leading to Japan's surrender and the end of World War II. However, the bombings also marked the beginning of the nuclear age, raising complex questions about the ethical implications of nuclear weapons, the responsibilities of the scientists who create them, and the governments that wield them. For Oppenheimer, the successful detonation of the atomic bomb was a moment of triumph, but it was also tinged with a sense of foreboding about the future. Oppenheimer was part of the scientific committee that advised the War Department to use the bomb against Japan as soon as possible. There remains a historical debate as to whether the U.S. government heeded the scientists' request to target only military installations or to conduct a public test of the bomb to encourage Japan's surrender without actual use on a city. On the night of the Hiroshima bombing, Oppenheimer was celebrated by fellow scientists at Los Alamos. He declared that his only regret was that the bomb had not been completed in time to be used against Nazi Germany. Despite the celebration of their achievement, many scientists, including Oppenheimer, were horrified by the loss of civilian lives in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They feared that the development and use of nuclear weapons might encourage future conflicts rather than prevent them. A few weeks after the bombings, Oppenheimer expressed his concerns in a letter to the Secretary of War, stating that the safety of this nation cannot lie wholly or even primarily in its scientific or technical prowess. It can be based only on making future wars impossible. Oppenheimer's reflections highlight the deep ambivalence felt by many of the scientists involved in the Manhattan Project. While they recognized the role of the atomic bomb in ending World War II, they also grappled with the ethical implications of their work and the potential consequences for the future. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki marked not only the end of World War II, but also the beginning of a new era characterized by the potential for nuclear annihilation. The development and use of nuclear weapons raised fundamental questions about the responsibilities of scientists, the decisions of governments, and the future of humanity. Oppenheimer's journey from child prodigy to key figure of the Manhattan Project and his subsequent reflections on the ethical implications of his work encapsulate the complex interplay of scientific achievement, ethical responsibility, and political decision-making that define the nuclear age.